Can you find Jacob, Diane? Hi, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, great. No, just to be right here. Yes. And, and if you could get Ron. Andrew, would, would you make one more? Everybody, I want to welcome you to the Booker Tov, everyone. I want to welcome you all with happiness to the Israel Conference of 2010. We're extremely excited that you're here because it's another beautiful June day, and we have a lineup of stellar people. We have in a, in a wonderful way, we've brought together some of the best that we can bring from Israel right here into Los Angeles. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sharona Justman, and I am the co-chair of the Israel Conference. I'm a co-chair along with Yossi Vardi, uh, and the, uh, we've had a ver very exciting process of putting everyone together. As you know, our theme is cool business from the shores of the Mediterranean to the shores of the Pacific. And it makes us very excited to be able to bring to you today a number of people. Uh, we have... We have a number of incredible technologies and amazing companies that we'll be going over with you. There's over 600 people who have registered throughout the day, and it's a long day. We have a 13-hour day, and as all, you all know, because you're all deeply involved in numerology and gematria, you know that 13 represents the words for love, ahava. And so that's why we decided to make it a 13-hour day and really take you on a, a wonderful tour of bringing Israel to LA. Um, we have as a, as a statistic, it's very interesting, of the people who are registered for our conference, over 42% are senior executives. And we like that because we want you all to get to know each other. Uh, part of our process of the Israel conference is increasing familiarity between businesses so that you can get to know each other and find ways to increase the volume of activity of making good business through good relationships that become great companies. We have a very wonderful quality associated to our conference, and we break it up into a number of different sessions. Um, we have uh, a series of special speakers, which we'll be enjoying shortly. 
We have Fast and Cool, which you're going to love. Uh, and we have panels, which are fascinating. Uh, senior executive CEOs talking about the various industries. And we have outside this year a pavilion of companies, which will meet a few of the people shortly. Of course, none of these activities can get done without the proper teammates, uh, having good friends with ideas, um, having excellent an excellent organizing team, which is in your book. You'll see a number of the wonderful people on the first page uh, who have put this program together. We have tons of partners, uh, which I'll tell you about. We have the e extraordinary speakers, attendees, many people from the media, uh, our sponsors we can't live without, and then we have our magicians. One of our magicians today is uh, VCube that I want to tell you about. That's a streaming group, and we want to thank them very much for their service in web broadcasting today's program. This event will be available on demand at the israelconference.org. So if you would like to see this again afterwards or tell a colleague about it, you can see it right here. And I want to thank Soji for bringing his crew from VCube. Um, we have. Uh, an incredible uh, backing by our fabulous sponsors uh, with Marvell, uh, which is a great uh, technology company with a huge campus in Israel with over 1,200 employees. And since we're about job creation and new business and economic development, we love talking about our sponsors that are taking large strides to be part of the Pacific and part of the Mediterranean shores. Uh, our platinum sponsor is New Century Capital Partners that has a hospitality suite in the center lobby as well. We have uh, the, our gold sponsors of Answers.com and Shepard Mullen, as well as Step Strategy. Uh, we have our silver sponsors of the uh, Canaan Partners and Sequoia Capital, uh, our, this beautiful Lux Hotel, and the David Nahai Companies, Vintage Filings, and the economic mission of the State of Israel, as well as the Jewish Community Foundation and Rubenstein Justman. And then we have our wonderful bronze sponsors from El Al, Bank Lumi, the largest bank in Israel, Wells Fargo, the largest bank in the US, um, Fox Rothschild, uh, Silicon Valley Bank, excellent for technology, banking, Qualcomm, Glazer Wheel, and Wasserman Condom, uh, without which we couldn't do our work. Uh, we have a ton of fabulous people in the community that come to help us that you'll be meeting throughout the day from large newspapers uh, uh, through I Hollywood Forum uh, as well as great food which you find on your table courtesy of Tanuva Awesome Uvend as well as uh, you'll see later some good wines from Tepperberg uh, which we'll be enjoying throughout the, from lunch forward not before breakfast. Um, so as we get into the, our Israel conference today, what we're looking for is the best in innovation, the best in technology, and we're wanting to bring an exciting discussion to you, highlighting information from each of the industries of clean tech, media tech, including advertising, digital delivery, mobile, as well as to, uh, we'll learn a lot about medical devices and medical applications and consumer products. Um, our best feature is the networking that will take place amongst all of you, which is a wonderful thing. We want you here in the room, but we also want you outside talking to each other and getting to know each other wonderfully. Uh, with that, I'd like to bring up, uh, or to mention to you, we'll, we'll be, have a pavilion of companies we've moderated by a wonderful member of the organizing team, Iran Wagner, who is the president for North American Operations uh, for our CVIDIA. And, uh, and we uh, will be uh, moderating, um, we have something very special right before lunch that will be brought to you by Ishar Shai from Canaan Partners. Um, we want you to today to learn about a story, to tell others about what you hear today, and to increase the volume of activity that takes place as we think about business and we think about Israeli businesses and those that have a campus both here in the United States, especially in California, and in Israel. I, I would like to welcome, because of that, the great Consul General of the State of Israel, Jacob Dayan, to represent us for Israel. Thank you. Shalom. Thank you very much. Shalom, everyone, and good morning. Um, Sharona, 
I'd like to start by congratulating you uh, for this wonderful, wonderful project. You are doing an amazing, amazing work. I've seen you working since the last conference when you finished that and the first day you started working on this one and this is really a testament of uh, how hard you work uh, and you are a true representative of this unique city and this is a unique city because it has uh, something that not many other cities have in the world. It's, it has not only the innovation, it has not only the creativity, but it has the second largest Jewish community in the world. And this community stand up and speak for the state, speak up for the state of Israel. And by convening this conference, you are doing so and you are making a difference for the state of Israel. Today, unlike uh, maybe 62 years ago when the state of Israel was reestablished and we had four centers of demographic power. One was uh, in Israel, the second one was in Western Europe, the third one was in Eastern Europe, and the fourth one was here in the United States. Those four centers of demographic power shrinked into two. Today, the Jewish world has two centers of power, of demographic power. One is in the state of Israel and the second one is here in the United States of America. And what people here are not doing for the Jewish people or for the Jewish state is not going to happen, either for the Jewish people nor for, this, for the Jewish state. And, you know, we are in difficult times, and I'm sure that all of you are following this, uh, this flotilla, uh, but you have to look at this flotilla as part of, uh, of a, a strategic campaign against Israel. It is a strategic campaign to try and to delegitimize the state of Israel, to put it in such a corner that it will not be able to defend itself. It's part of the Goldstone campaign, it's part of other campaigns that are taking place even here in Los Angeles. And nowadays when I'm briefing everyone about what is happening with this flotilla, the first, the second, and the fifth question that I always get is, why the Hasbara, why the PR of Israel is, is so lousy? And, and you know what? I, I tend to agree with that. Don't quote me here in this, this small room. But sometimes we really do a lousy job. But you know, thanks to you, thanks to each and every one that is sitting in this room, we live today in a different world. We live in a different world in which everyone is a PR person. Everyone is doing Hasbara. Everyone can make a difference, can turn the page for the state of Israel. Sharona is getting closer and closer to me, so I... <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's true. Today, every blog is being read. Today, everyone, every youth stream is being seen and being heard. And you have an unconventional weapon here in this room for the state of Israel. You can make a difference in the PR, you can make a difference in the Hasbara, you can use this technological innovations and, and amazing achievements that you all of you created in this room for the state of Israel. Making sure that in this global campaign, global war, in the attempt of, to delegitimize the state of Israel, we can win and we should win. And we can win because of all of you. Um, you think that she's trying to tell me something? Yeah. Well, Jacob, I, I think it's, it, it's so fascinating to go over the, uh, the activities that are going politically. And one of the things that we love uh, here is that we get to focus intensely on business. And, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll read about all the politics and we'll take it up to the next level by doing fabulous business. I, I, I appreciate the... Uh, but uh, I want to tell you... <laughs> Listen, I'm in a mission here. I'm in a mission here because, because you can make a difference. On Sunday, for example, this unique city, on Sunday at 2 o'clock in front of the consulate, is going to organize a huge rally for the state of Israel. I'm calling each and every one of you to be present and to bring his family, his friends, everyone at 2 o'clock on Sunday for the state of Israel. And remember, and I'll finish with that, Sharona, when you are speaking up, when you are standing for the state of Israel, you are doing so on behalf of all the silent, small communities around the world that are too small and too afraid to speak for the state of Israel. 
enjoy, learn, and uh, expand the, co the cooperation. Good luck. Thank you, Jacob. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Well, we are all about the state of Israel. And next, I'd like to bring up a, a, a brief uh, moment of uh, the Pavilion of Companies, and I'll introduce you to Aaron Wagner uh, to come on up and uh, tell us a little bit briefly about the Pavilion of Companies with our two of our great pavilions. Good morning, everyone. So as you know, um, last year was the first time uh, Sharona was able to fulfill her uh, dream of a few years, that I, at least that I know of, of creating this Israel conference. It was an amazing first event, and it's, I think, more amazing this year. Uh, and the day after we finished last year's conference, Sharona was already calling me with like a hundred ideas of what we could do different next year um, to make this event even more successful. One of those ideas was the Pavilion of Companies which actually came to fruition uh, through the great work of a whole bunch of people. Uh, we have 10 companies here today that uh, are presenting amazing technology, great ideas. Some of them are a little bit earlier in their evolution. Some of them are a little bit more mature. And it is my great honor to present to you um, this morning uh, two of them. We will probably do it this again a little bit later and mm -hmm. present uh, some of the others. Um, so why don't I start with uh, my good friend Ron Adar from Tigo Technology. Please stand up. Uh, Tigo is a company that is revolutionizing the uh, solar market with great improvement of all solar systems. They create uh, yield improvements for existing systems as well as uh, creating uh, potential for uh, even bigger yield improvements for future systems. Uh, they are al already have a shipping product and already have thousands or tens of thousands of, of units out um, and they're definitely a, a great part of the uh, new clean energy and green future of our planet. Uh, the second person here is Roy Barav, another good old friend from Simbi and as you know um, nobody watches advertising on TV anymore and if some of you still do it's just because you don't know how to operate the DVR like your kids do and because of that um, product placement uh, and some of the technologies that CMB is developing, developing are becoming critical to the future of TV and I am sure that you will be amazed if you go to the uh, booth behind us and see some of the, uh, the great stuff that CMB is doing with networks like Fox uh, and shows like How I Met Your Mother, right? Is that How I Met Your Mother? Um, so hopefully I'll see you again a little bit later presenting two additional companies and maybe before I leave here one more round of applause for Sharona. Thank you, Rohan. The applause actually goes to all of you for spending your day here and uh, most of your day in learning about some companies. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to something extremely exciting. Uh, you know, we all depend on search for uh, looking at one of the greatest companies, Google. And we have with us today the head of Google Israel's R&D Center, Yossi Matthias, to tell us a little bit about how does Google come up with all their great ideas and where in fact do all those good ideas come from? Quite possibly Israel. And with that, let me bring up Yossi Matthias. Thank you. Thanks, Sharona. Can you hear me? Where's the clicker? Clear. Here it is. Thank you. So, uh, hello everybody. Good morning. My name is Yossi Matias. Thanks first to Sharona, Yossi, Vardi, and the organizers for inviting me here. Uh, it's very exciting to be here. Particular thanks to Sharona for her persistence in setting this up and this wonderful event. Um, so, before I start, actually, um, let me actually. Uh, I'm getting a lot of these questions. Why does Google need another 
to hire more engineers, to develop more technology. Search is working pretty well. Gmail is working quite well for most of us. YouTube is quite successful. Uh, so I thought I'll start with um, highlighting a few recent uh, innovative um, technologies for the last uh, couple of years. Um, so let me start with search, because obviously search is um, the thing that people know mostly about uh, Google. And uh, search is uh, hardly a solved problem. Actually, if our ultimate goal is to have search um, uh, essentially guess and address any question that the user may be, may have, then we're all the time approaching this goal, but we're quite far from that. So just to highlight some of our attempts to get closer to our ultimate goal, um, so if you search for weather in New York, it's actually getting nicer because you can get the answer right away. If you're looking, um, if you're going on a flight back to Israel, um, LY8 will give you already all the flight details. Um, you're looking for some uh, show in New York or um, some uh, Real Madrid information uh, about uh, soccer. Um, music, um, you can actually play and get some uh, uh, listen to music right away after your search. So all these are kind of attempts which are quite recent, some of them, and uh, are getting us closer to our goal of getting better what we want. Now, even better, sometimes when we start searching, uh, we actually get some suggestions about what we may want to search. Um, and these suggestions are getting improved all the time. So for now, if we, I make some changes to my searches, if I have some spelling uh, mistakes, as I start typing still, it can guess what I mean to type. Um, and um, it doesn't matter about language, if I am speaking Arabic and I want to use transliteration, which is essentially using the Latin words, uh, again, this can guess what the user may want. And, and as you can see here, and perhaps appreciate, the idea is actually to try and be clever and make life easier for the user, and users are expecting to get more. So we're at an ever, um, uh, and in some cases actually as we start typing, we may want to get the answer right on the spot. Uh, in this case, it's actually on a mobile, which obviously is quite uh, helpful because typing on a mobile is not as uh, easy as we know. So when we look into all these attempts, uh, these are all approaching our attempt to try and better uh, guess better what the user wants and arguably we're just at the beginning of that journey. There's a lot to be improved in order for us to search better. Now, much of these technologies, uh, which are kind of, uh, some of us are, are getting used to using them, um, are actually heavily using uh, a lot of data which is out there. And the power of data is really something that is uh, more and more appreciated for many and more technologies. Uh, with uh, hun over a billion internet users and a billion searches a day uh, and, uh, and, and more than that on, on many search engines actually there's a lot of data that can be leveraged for improved technology. So search is only one of them. Just to give highlights on some other innovations based on data, um, for those of you uh, perhaps familiar with Google Trends, one can actually see, and this is available for anybody to see the patterns of how many people are using say for the word ski in any particular over time. And we can see the seasonality. Similarly, we can see the popularity of Facebook going up. Um, in a tool called Google Insights for Search, one can actually get a pretty good analysis on any search term of your liking, how it distributed over time, over geography, what are the related keywords, which is becoming an extremely powerful tool for business, marketeers, economists, uh, even health uh, initiatives. Uh, so, for example, you can see here the campaign, uh, during the campaign of Obama versus McCain, the popularity, how it distributed over uh, the states in the U.S. And this is actually becoming more and more uh, one of the tools and technologies which are utilized by people to analyze data and to um, uh, make some sense of it. Um, similarly, if uh, you're in the business of digital cameras, it's quite insightful to understand when people are looking for Canon, are they looking for more pixels, are they looking for more uh, zoom? What are the attributes which are more interesting and more important? And of course, this can be translated into some business decisions. Um, this is, of course, part of a general approach of leveraging on data. Um, those of you familiar with Google Analytics is, uh, is another way to actually leverage on, um, on search patterns uh, for website owners to get better understanding of what's going on. Um, in fact, these, uh, and, and there are plenty of other technologies out there about analyzing data, categorizing it, slicing it, and making it available to anybody. So what was once the uh, only available for the very high-end users, very sophisticated for a lot of money, is now becoming commonplace for any, sh any shop, any pizza, any retail, small retail shop can actually use these technologies uh, and make them, uh, because they are becoming available. 
Uh, one exciting uh, usage, by the way, of this uh, search data is, uh, is in public health initiatives um, identifying uh, flu uh, outbreaks. So there's an initiative actually using this data uh, called Flu Trends to try and understand and guess by patterns of searches where there may be flu outbreaks out there. And with work done with the CDC, um, actually, it turns out that this data some, can sometime anticipate or identify outbreaks two weeks before the CDC data actually can do that, which is quite helpful, of course. Similarly, it's used now by microeconomics. There are some uh, scholars and uh, research papers showing that you can use some of these search trends to identify macroeconomic trends. Uh, if typically the Federal Bank uh, publishes these uh, indicators once a month, one can use actually real-time data for such indicators. And this is a kind of one example. Obviously, I cannot have time to stop over that. Um, another aspect, which is um, another technology which we see in the last uh, years in, in terms of data analysis, is the question, how do we present all this data, all this power of data? How do we make sense of it? And uh, anybody who tried to take data and make it visualized can appreciate that this is not an easy task. So what we see emerging are some technologies that actually take all sorts of cool visualizations and make them <clears throat> very easy to use for anybody to take their data on their spreadsheet, on their database, and uh, put some cool visualizations, and eventually actually put these visualizations also into a website, publish them, make them available, rather than using just images, have interactive charts, interactive visualizations that can be leveraged and utilized uh, on maps, on uh, anything else. I mentioned Gmail earlier. So again, Gmail, um, it, I think it's pretty useful as it is. However, there are some rooms for improvement, obviously. So for example, suppose you'd like to communicate with somebody who has, uh, um, who's not currently online, but uh, actually using SMS, which is uh, quite often the case in, in many countries, especially developer countries, or some more developed countries. In Israel, SMS is extremely powerful. So now you can actually use um, a chat from Gmail and, uh, and interact directly through SMS to a mobile phone. So you have this uh, connection between the Gmail world and chat instant messaging and the SMS world, which is kind of the old technology, but which is quite popular still in many places in the world. Uh, some other examples of new developments in Gmail, um, there are plenty of lab features. Uh, lab is a, is, is a space within Gmail that you can actually try out all sorts of technologies. So to highlight uh, one of them, um, one thing that uh, I don't know how many of you, um, it happened that you send a message to a few people just to discover later that one of them was the wrong Bob. Happen to anybody? Yeah, I see many. Okay, happened to me quite a bit. So uh, you can actually have this feature that actually can alert you that uh, that Bob in the two field is, is prob potentially not the one you mentioned. You actually intended to send. It's probably the autocomplete that put it for you, uh, but uh, it can identify it based on some history of, uh, of patterns. Uh, it's pretty useful. It saved my life several times. Um, YouTube, again, it's pretty popular, but actually you can observe some very interesting and exciting developments on YouTube. Uh, for example, one can take today any uh, YouTube clip and add these annotations, which are very helpful because you can actually add some explanations. Uh, you can make uh, promotions to other YouTube clicks. Um, once this technology was put out, actually it was quite fascinating to see the kind of usage that uh, creative minds put into that. So this is an example where actually every uh, key on the piano is clickable and actually will take you to another uh, video clip. Uh, quite interestingly, the police um, of uh, London um, <clears throat> uh, used it in order to develop some branching stories on YouTube uh, for educational purposes. So they created these scripts about um, a teenager who has, faces all sorts of decisions early in the day. Should I take a knife to school? Should I not? And then the story branches according to where the user clicks. Uh, it's pretty interesting to see these applications. Some of it is used for uh, branch out. Once this uh, for brand uh, advertising. Um, once the technology was put out, actually it turns out that a good fraction of all played YouTube clips already using this technology. Um, another application, and this is another example for, for that. Another application is the application of engagements uh, and contests. Uh, so one approach is to take YouTube and make it a platform for users to interact back um, for debates. So this is a place, uh, Davos Debates is an opportunity for, um, for users to actually ask questions and have uh, them discussed in Davos. Uh, there are various campaigns uh, by advertisers, some of them uh, by uh, election campaigns. In Israel, they used it uh, for 
um, asking the candidates uh, questions by users, by voters. Uh, there was a very exciting initiative called the YouTube Symphony Orchestra, which enabled anybody, any musician, to upload a video clip to let other users vote on them and then take the winners um, and bring them over to Carnegie Hall and play together a symphony. Uh, and again, this facilitated this uh, contest kind of initiative. Um, and and it's, as I mentioned, this was used by many uh, big advertisers. Um, some other exciting technologies. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, you can actually buy an ad on TV through Google platform for quite cheap, actually. Um, and there's a full engine of auctions, the same um, similar concept to what happens on the uh, AdWords, on the uh, main advertising engine for Google, also can be used in a different variation uh, for ads. Uh, and developing this auction is, is an example for this kind of technology that uh, is important. Um, these are, everything I mentioned so far are visible technologies, but it's important to appreciate the amount of work required to support everything in, under these technologies. Uh, so the notion of internet scale infrastructure, how to support search, um, which you need to always have the instant result, how to support the, uh, all these views on YouTube, all these uh, tens of millions of users worldwide uh, for Gmail, etc., etc. And just to recap about scalability and history, uh, this was the first data center for Google uh, back in 97. Um, that's actually with a Lego case. Uh, 98, the garage in Palo Alto. Uh, 2000, the data center, which starts to look like a data center. Uh, that's already 2006, and there are several of those. Now we're at 2010, so you can extrapolate. Now the question is, how do you support all the traffic, all the infrastructure computation going on all this? Uh, this presents ever-growing uh, challenges, technological challenges. So I mentioned all these recent innovations uh, around uh, search, around data analysis, around YouTube, around Gmail, etc. Um, these are, of course, only a fraction of what was developed uh, in the last couple of years. One thing which is common to all of those, that they were all developed in Israel. So this is, a, a, I think, just a representation. There are plenty others that I could not mention here. But uh, uh, these are all global innovation that were all developed in our uh, Israeli center um, or, or with, a, uh, with a significant participation of. Uh, but most of them were actually led by, by our center. So uh, just let me tell you a little bit about what's going on and how we came to that. Uh, so first, in terms of highlights, these are big areas that we're currently leading in Israel. Uh, when I say leading, it doesn't mean that we're leading all of search, of course, but we're leading uh, significant areas within search. And uh, similarly, within data analysis and visualizations, uh, infrastructure and networking and apps. And we have all sorts of other special projects um, which are kind of typically growing up of, uh, of uh, innovation. Now, how did we get there? Uh, so this is the campus, the beautiful campus of Stanford. That's where actually uh, Lauren Sergey started um, uh, Google as a, as a grad student. Uh, coincidentally, I was also there visiting uh, some four years ago, um, part-time visiting actually. I was also in a startup company when I was approached and, uh, and, and asked whether I could, uh, about the opportunity of, uh, of starting a center in Israel. And, and I actually had similar questions to the questions I mentioned early on, which uh, I asked, well, why would you want a center in Israel? Um, and the answer I got was, uh, well, we know about the talent, we have the good reputation, we have the good Googlers. Uh, who are Israelis on board and, uh, and we like what they're doing. Uh, and there's uh, obviously the good track record. We have the uh, wonderful centers for other big companies and all the startup companies and the innovative uh, spirit, which is uh, well known. So these are all good answers, of course. Um, uh, my next question was, well, what would you like me to do there? And the answer was, well, we'd like you to go and figure it out, which is part of, um, which of course I liked quite a bit. Uh, it was uh, too exciting to pass on. But it also represents some of the culture in Google, which is bottom-up. It's a culture of enabling people, enabling engineers, enabling uh, um, uh, whoever, whatever profession um, uh, uh, that we bring on board to actually be responsible to what we do. Um, so these are actually, that's a slide from a presentation that Alan Eustace gave when we launched our Tel Aviv Center. Um, and, and essentially, he, he was kind of addressing a similar question. So this was the team back in uh, 2007 when we just moved to our office. Um, about a year later, uh, this is already a team. It's actually including uh, a team from both Tel Aviv and Haifa, which was then a different cent separate center, and also has our sales team, uh, which are co-located with us. Uh, and of course, we grew up 
quite a bit since then. Uh, about a year ago, we actually merged the Tel Aviv and Haifa Center into a single center, um, which, uh, which is based in both uh, Tel Aviv and Haifa. Uh, so we have a team of over 100 engineers um, and, uh, and, and, and developing these global technologies that I mentioned. Um, and when I try, and quite recently we actually had our first acquisition, LapX is, uh, and we were very excited about that. So uh, a few notes about uh, the office itself and about, um, uh, uh, these are kind of pictures from the Tel Aviv office, from the Haifa office. Um, as you can see, the Google Spirit are, is there. Just to highlight uh, final words about, uh, these are, I mentioned some of the technologies and projects there. But uh, one thing I'm quite proud of is our all the quite initiatives that uh, engineers and others are doing as part of their 20% time. So uh, as you may know, in Google, everyone uh, is encouraged to actually use 20% time for all sorts of initiatives. Some of them are developing new projects, new technologies, some of them for other purposes. Uh, so just to mention, if you're working with universities, some uh, fabul fabulous classes which develop some great technologies, we have some engineers taking initiatives with high school. Uh, this is an example for a, an initiative of uh, uh, some of our engineers which already influenced over 1,000 uh, female high school uh, students to consider math and uh, sciences uh, seriously with a quite significant impact. And um, uh, quite proud of collaboration taken, uh, initiative taken one, one of the engineers to actually facilitate a YouTube channel for Yad Vashem which overnight increased uh, viewership of um, uh, of uh, YouTube, uh, of uh, video clips on, uh, of Yad Vashem by a factor of uh, a thousand or more. And uh, recently there was an initiative within Google that uh, uh, reacting to the crisis in Haiti and later in Chile. And so this is an example for an application of which uh, we had a very significant participation from our Israeli office where engineers actually got into the task over a few days or a few days and nights, developed an application that assists that uh, uh, people to actually find their um, um, relatives and others. So with that, um, I think my time is up, so I'll finish with that, and thank you again. Thank you so much. Google, we all can't live without Google, and it's uh, fantastic to know what you're doing in Israel, and I want to thank you so kindly mm -hmm. for coming and, and being part of today's program. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Yossi. We have another exciting part of our conference. Uh, as we go through and learn about what's happening in Israel, we want to introduce a Fast and Cool. And with that, I'd like to bring up uh, our, our Fast and Cool next. Uh, we, in that um, mechanism of Fast and Cool, we're going to show you a quick four to five minutes of what's happening in, in an Israeli slash California company. And come on up, I'd like to introduce you to Izhar Shai from Canaan Partners, <laughs> who's going to talk to us uh, about what we're about to see in the world of fast and cool. Thank you, Sharona. So good to be here again. Um, fast and cool. How fast and cool can be a clean tech company, one would think, but uh, the one we are going to, to listen to right now is fast and cool and pretty fascinating. It is also a typical Israeli story. A couple of entrepreneurs started in almost a garage operation, a seed environment, coming up with a great idea about three years ago, seed funded by a seed fund in Israel, and then growing up their operations as it is so typical, they recruited a US executive who happens to be an Israeli uh, in order to run a parallel organization throughout uh, both these continents. And as it so happens so many times in Israel, uh, I know Woody for, I think, more than 20 years now. He and I worked for the Israeli government in a small secret, I wouldn't call this an operation, but anyway, I'm not allowed to, I see that I'm not allowed to elaborate on that. So, Odi Prayet is Pythagoras' VP of Marketing and Business Development. Please welcome Woody. Thank you. Thank you. I think this uh, faster pace is really fascinating. One reason is uh,